じゃあ皆さんおはようございます<笑><笑>それだけで拍手しますか<笑>じゃあもうちょっと日本語でしましょうか<笑> No, I think I'll, I'll, I'll stick to English、uh, today, but I appreciate the round of applause for saying good morning.、Um, today, I want to talk about the Linux Foundation and、uh, how 2022, how this year has been for both、uh, open source and for the Linux Foundation.、Um, this year has been a very busy year、uh, as we all return back to normal、uh, during, after the COVID pandemic. Uh, I see here in Japan, you're still wearing masks.、Uh, but what I'm very happy to see is that the border to come visit Japan is now open.、Uh, and、uh, I intend to spend much more time here in Japan、uh, in 2023. But in 2022, we had a really good year.、Uh, and before I talk about all the things that the Linux Foundation accomplished,、uh, I think it's important for all of us to. Understand what organizations like the Linux Foundation do,、uh, what the foundation's role in the industry is, what developers who create open source software's role in the industry is, and what、uh, companies like the companies here in Japan,、uh, what their role is in open source software. And so I'm going to use an internet meme to talk about what、uh, foundations do. Uh, my friends think that I give speeches all over the world. That's what foundations do.、Uh, my mom thinks I can do nothing wrong. She's a very good fan of, of mine.、Uh, society in general thinks that open source is still some strange form of socialism.、Um, developers think that open source foundations just spend a ton of money for no reason at all. Just,、uh, Like to raise money and then burn money.、Uh, I think that I'm a pretty good boss and a good leader of the Linux Foundation.、Uh, but what foundations actually do is a lot like what janitors do in buildings like this.、Uh, we keep things clean, we keep the lights on,、uh, we make sure that it's a great place to come and do work and visit. The Linux Foundation's job in open source is not to pay for the actual development of software. There are 604,000 developers who work every day across just Linux Foundation projects. Our job is to bring developers and technology companies together at events like this to promote open source software engagement so that. More companies and developers come and work together on open source software that industry uses to create the products and services they depend upon. We own the intellectual property assets for the world's most important open source projects. We own the trademarks, we manage the copyright,、uh, and we work on defending these projects. From intellectual property assaults by creating patent, non aggression zones, and much, much more. It's important to also understand that open source foundations like the Linux Foundation really only focus on a small set of open source projects. Today, there are over 80 million open source projects on just GitHub alone. That doesn't include GitLab and other places where open source gets developed. But really, if you think about the open source software that's used every day to create digital services, modern consumer devices, automobiles, banking systems, telecommunications infrastructure, the number of open source projects that are used for those applications is actually much, much smaller. You know, it's open source projects like Linux and Kubernetes and Node.js. And those are the projects that the Linux Foundation focuses on, the most valuable open source projects in the world. Our job is to make the open source projects we host the most successful, the safest, the most secure, the most welcoming that we possibly can. And we can never get it 100% perfect, but we try to get it better and better. And we do that so that 
people like you and the companies you work for can create all of the software products and services that you sell to your customers. And when you sell those products and services, which you've built using open source, you make a little bit of money. And you use that money not to pay the Linux Foundation, although we'll take it if you want to give it to us. Uh, but you mainly use that money to pay developers to continue to contribute to the open source projects that we facilitate at the foundation. Better projects means better products, means more profit for your company, and then more investment back into the project, and it's a virtuous cycle. The projects become products, become profit, become uh, better product, pro projects. And to do that actually takes a lot of different activity. And I'm not gonna read all of the different things that uh, we do to support that project, product, profit flywheel, but this is what it looks like. Event staff, legal teams, uh, IT infrastructure, uh, developer relations, documentation, uh, community meetups, and much, much more. That's what it really means to do large-scale technical collaboration at a place like the Linux Foundation. This is about building ecosystems. And there are a very small number of ecosystem-built projects out there, but they're used in the most important applications. And I want to show you a good, an example of an industry that the Linux Foundation has worked with to do all the things you just saw to build an ecosystem. And it's in an unexpected place. It's in the film and cinema area in partnership with the Motion Picture Academy, the home of the Oscars. I just want to show you a quick video of what the kind of ecosystem building we do with industries every day. Every single part of the filmmaking process is touched by software, and a lot of that software is open source software. The Academy Software Foundation exists to provide a great home for open source projects that we as an industry use every day. user of open source software, or an engineer, or a company that relies on open source software, we want to create the right ecosystem for you to get the most out of the open source software that you need to use. So I thought that was, that was very well said by uh, Rob Brito. Rob is the president of Industrial Light and Mag uh, Magic. Uh, he's also an Academy Award nominee for his work on the Star Wars films. Uh, and, you know, it's... It, 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 what he said, we want to create an environment where you can get the most out of the open source software you need uh, is exactly what open source foundations like the Linux Foundation do. And so at the Academy Software Foundation, rather than have to rebuild for every movie an entirely new set of CGI software, they share that software across film production groups, across different film studios, and they're able to create uh, the kind of incredible visual effects that you see. So next time you take your family to go see a Star Wars movie or a Spider-Man movie, uh, tell them that you're a part of the community that helps create that open source software. And the scale of this open source collaboration 
2022 has reached an all-time high. In 2022, the Linux Foundation convened over 29,000 meetings, largely video calls, uh, some in-person meetings. Technical contributors from around the world made decisions about the most important software in the world. They represented 16,000 companies, 52 million lines of code a week. They sent millions of email messages discussing the open source software that we co-create together. We went and used advanced testing tools to find vulnerabilities in that software. And more importantly, we worked with the developer communities to fix those vulnerabilities in this critical open source software. Facilitating this activity at the largest scale ever seen in the history of technology is what open source foundations do. To give you a sense of the scope and scale of this activity, this number I think is really interesting. 26 billion US dollars. Nanoku, can't remember. Uh, $26 billion is uh, a lot of money. This number represents what it would cost to pay directly the developers who work just on Linux Foundation projects. 604,000 developers. If you take the average salary of a software developer, and I'm talking the average of from the United States at the highest to Nigeria at the lowest, the average software developer around the world makes about 24,000 US dollars. If you multiply that times the number of people who work in the Linux Foundation projects, the payroll for that would be $26 billion. That makes just the Linux Foundation, and remember, this is not all open source, but just the Linux Foundation, the largest software development company in the world. Microsoft is the largest commercial software company in the world, and according to their 2022 annual report, they spent $22 billion on research and development. So it's just amazing to think how big the scale of this kind of software development is and why it's so important to support organizations like the Linux Foundation or the Eclipse Foundation or the Apache Software Foundation who are relatively small in their budgets but are able to facilitate a multi-billion dollar software development effort. So I get asked a lot, how do we define success for an open source foundation? like the Linux Foundation. You know, we're not, we're a not for nonprofit, so profit margins are not success. Revenue growth is not success. For us, the number one measure of success is impact. Did we have an impact on innovation in the technology industry? Were we able to facilitate new technologies, make new markets, create software that can change how all of us consume and create technology. That's how we measure ourselves. And what we've been able to do is make markets and have impact again and again. You know, it's important to remember that Linux now represents the vast majority of the world's software infrastructure. Roughly 90% of the world's computing systems run on top of Linux across embedded systems, mobile devices, supercomputers, high performance computing, mainframes, and much, much more. We're also breaking new ground in semiconductor technology. RISC-V is the fastest growing ecosystem for silicon instruction set technology. In drone code, one of our projects that's creating open source unmanned aerial vehicle software, they've clocked over a million drones flying that software around the world. And in the energy sector, we're working with grid providers from countries in Europe and around the world to modernize the distribution of energy in order to make it more efficient. When energy is distributed across a country or between countries, roughly 30 plus percent of it gets lost in the distribution. 
by using smart software technology, open source technology, grid operators are able to reduce the waste in distributing power and have an impact on climate change. And it's not just the kind of technology and market impact that we care about at the Linux Foundation. It's also social impact. We're working on projects that are using open source technology to prevent wildlife poaching in Africa, to help people vote in the United States, to improve network access for underserved communities around the world. And we have a project called AgStack that's creating an open source platform for modern architecture, or for modern ar uh, agriculture. This will help us meet the food needs of now 8 billion people around the world. That is the kind of impact that an open source foundation like ours can have. And boy, we had a good year. 79 new projects, 92,000 people at meetings like this. We introduced 11 new uh, online courses for software development. Uh, one of our uh, software classes on secure coding had 10 thousand people register for a course on secure coding practices in one day, the first day it was launched. We've spent millions of dollars helping people from unrepresented communities come to events like this. We've had over 3,000 organizations join our organization. We released 14 research papers this year. Many people don't know, but the Linux Foundation has a new research group that's breaking ground on how open source can be improved in the areas of cybersecurity, collaboration, and preventing uh, its slowdown. We had some pretty notable new projects in 2022. I think PyTorch is probably one that stands out amongst all of these projects. PyTorch has now become the de facto standard for modern machine learning. Over 50% of downstream AI tooling relies on PyTorch. And we're in very early days when it comes to the impact of machine learning and artificial intelligence. If you don't believe me, go look at some of the generative AI tools that are out there today, and uh, you'll see just how amazing and how impactful AI technology will be over the next decade. We've had new networking projects come in like Sonic, and we announced in Europe last fall the Open Wallet Foundation, which is an open source set of standards and code that will help open up our digital wallets to be able to have competition in how we use our digital driver's license, digital car keys, our Suica cards, our credit cards, and much, much more. You'll hear more about the Open Wallet Foundation uh, early in 2023, we're really excited about the uh, prospects for that project. We expanded our reach around the world at the Linux Foundation in 2022. We really are a global community of members, not only here in Japan, but throughout the entire world. Wherever there's software being developed, the Linux Foundation has people and members of our community working and living there. Our event team has done an amazing job recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic. You can see in 2020, we shifted to almost entirely virtual events. And now as we come back from the pandemic, more and more face-to-face -face events like this are happening and our events team is really stepping up. In fact, here's a, another meme of what our events teams really do. You know, Most of us think that events like this happen really smoothly and they're super easy, and it's like planning a party, uh, but actually thousands and thousands of hours of work go into making sure that when we get together anywhere in the world to collaborate in open source, that that event is the best it can possibly be. Convening 92,000 people across 250 events around the world is no small feat, and our events team does just an amazing job with that. Another area where we're expanding at the Linux Foundation, and I, I think this is important to understand, is in areas other than open source software. A few years ago, we decided to expand our mandate into other areas of open collaboration and open innovation. 
Today, we're seeing an increase in the number of open data projects at the Linux Foundation that are collecting data in order to have even greater impact in the world. One example of this is our OS Climate Initiative, which is combining open source data on climate change's impact on financial markets. By using this data in the open, financial planners, pension funds, insurance companies can more accurately predict how climate change will affect the price of stocks and private equity and bonds in the open markets. And I think when we all understand what the actual price of climate change is, you'll see a whole new set of behaviors around the world to reduce climate change's impact. We've expanded into open hardware with things like RISC-V, the Chips Alliance, Drone Code, and more. And in open standards, the Linux Foundation is now one of the largest standards development organizations in the world, hosting hundreds of standards, things like the Alliance for Open Media, the SPDX specification for Software Bill of Materials, which you're gonna hear about in a few moments, the open chain specification, an ISO standard that's used to make sure that people have the cleanest supply chain management for open source software that they can possibly have. We've also done a good job in supporting diversity within our communities. Diversity for us means diversity across the globe in terms of nationality, but also diversity in terms of gender, in terms of uh, social status, financial status, in terms of all different forms of underrepresented groups that we would like to make welcome at the Linux Foundation. You know, one of the biggest strengths of open source software is that there's a diverse set of opinions that create stronger innovation outcomes. And so we're investing in diversity, not just because we believe it's the right thing to do, but we're investing in diversity because we believe it's in the business interest of the Linux Foundation and all of you. And what you've seen is hundreds of people coming in, getting mentored in places like the Linux kernel and in the CNCF world, finding job opportunities where they wouldn't have had them, coming to places like this where they wouldn't have had access. And we think that's incredibly healthy. We also have open source projects specifically targeted to make our communities a more welcoming place to help bring more diversity into our communities because what we know is that diversity begets more diversity. The more people who come from diverse backgrounds, the more people additionally come from diverse backgrounds. And so we have our inclusive naming initiative that looks at how to language impacts inclusion within our projects. We have empowerment conferences, we have racial justice initiatives, and much, much more. And even at the Linux Foundation ourselves, we walk our talk in terms of the diversity in our organization. The majority of the employees of the Linux Foundation are female. We have a three times higher number of female executives at the Linux Foundation than an average Silicon Valley company. And we have twice as many rep female leaders on our board of directors as most technology companies. And I know we still all collectively have a long way to go here, but what I can tell you from direct experience is that the diversity we see at the Linux Foundation has helped us be a stronger organization. And so we had a great year in 2022, but I wanna spend my last couple of minutes here talking about some of the challenges in open source, things that we need to collectively face in 2023 in order to make this amazing, impactful collective investment even better. And those challenges really represent three things. First, security, cybersecurity, is really right now the most immediate and urgent challenge that we all face in the open source community. Things like the Log4J incident, supply chain uh, hacks, have really shaken the confidence that industry and society has in open source. And while I don't think this is a problem just for open source, because open source has become so widely used, it's important for all of us to recognize that we need to take on the security challenges that we now hold. Another challenge is the rise in techno-nationalism. In 2022, 
trade conflict between countries around the world created more isolationism. The conflict in the Ukraine made it even worse. The situation in China has made it very difficult due to the restrictive borders. And what's happening is people are collaborating, but they're only collaborating in their own region, essentially undermining one of the most important aspects of open source, which is a free, open, organic, global exchange of ideas. And then finally, economic headwinds, a tough economy, uh, a devalued yen, are making it hard to take on these challenges as we face harsh economic conditions. But we need to take on these challenges because they are not going away. In fact, in cybersecurity, they're immediate and urgent. One of the things that we're doing at the Linux Foundation through our Open Source Security Foundation is as quickly as possible trying to identify the most important shared software in the world, understand who writes that software, and then help those people make that software more secure in a partnership both with the public sector and the private sector. We've been working with Harvard University in a series of research papers and our own in-house research group to identify by sharing software composition analysis data, essentially anonymous sharing of your open source software usage, aggregating that, and then ranking literally by package and version number, what are the most important open source projects in the world? Not only what is the most widely used, but what's the most security critical? Is it network facing? Is cryptography involved? Can you escalate privilege in those projects? And we've come up with a prioritized list of open source projects that we want to prioritize to help them make that more secure. In fact, we took the research on the most important open source software in the world, and we went and directly asked the maintainers of that software what they need and it, to make more secure software. And it turns out, these software developers weren't all that hard to get a hold of because even though we have hundreds of thousands of developers in open source, the maintainers of the most important open source software in the world are actually a pretty manageable number in the thousands, not the tens or hundreds of thousands or millions. And so we went and talked to them. You know, one of the things we were surprised by is that about 136 developers are responsible for about 80% of the software in the top 50 packages, application level packages out there. I think that's just stunning. And when we talked to the 12, we went and surveyed 1,200 open source maintainers and asked them what they want to improve their software. And the number one thing they said they need is more time. It wasn't money, it wasn't better tooling, it wasn't better training, those came, they, they said those things too, but the number one thing they said was more time. And I think this is important for all of you, if you work at companies here in Japan, to remember. Give your software developers just a little bit more time, maybe just a few more hours a week to work on open source software, and I guarantee you that software will likely become more secure, more manageable, easier to consume. And that small investment will pay back in hundreds of thousands of hours that you will not need to spend fixing things after they've become a problem. The second thing that developers told us they need was better tooling. They told us they want to see the same kind of tooling in open source projects that they use inside of the companies that they work for. Modern security scanning tooling, software composition analysis tooling, better fuzzing, better CI-CD systems, all of these things were important to open source maintainers so that they could have better software outcomes in the open source projects that they were working on. And what we also found was very interesting is when we talked to the 1,200 most important open source software developers in the world is that money was important but it definitely wasn't the most important thing. Most of them were already being paid 
by companies like the ones that you know, your employees work for here in Japan, companies like NEC, Fujitsu, Toyota, and others, they were already being paid to work on open source. Their motivation to work on open source wasn't about money. It was about getting their job done, learning and personal development. It was helpful to work in open source to become better software engineers. They found it fun. You know, it's the, the best kind of job is the job where you get paid to work on your hobby. And that's what open source developers told us, is that they really enjoy the co-creation of software, working with their peers and improving their career prospects. These are the things that we need to offer open source developers if we want to see better security outcomes in the open source ecosystem. We talked to maintainers who told us that working on security didn't take as high a priority as adding a new feature. How many people here have worked on a software project where you, know, you really just had to get those features completed and everything else was secondary to that? And I think that's uh, common across any form of software development, but in 2022, where ransomware, nation state cyber attacks, cyber extortion, the shutdown of hospitals, the shutdown of energy grids is happening due to cybersecurity flaws, we need to do better than just adding new features. If we work together, we can both create great software and secure software at the same time. So one of the other ways that the Linux Foundation wants to help in security is we've created an open source security mobilization plan through our Open Source Security Foundation. You're gonna hear more about this from our next couple of speakers, but this is the first time ever that there's been a 10 point plan to address comprehensively supply chain and security needs for open source. We presented this document at the White House in the United States in May of this year, and we've made steady progress that you're gonna hear about in just a few minutes in meeting some of the goals within this plan. This plan works across the entire supply chain, from open source repositories to distribution mechanisms to build systems and much, much more, ensuring higher quality software, better traceability, and a better ability to remediate vulnerabilities when they happen. Finally, one note on the rise of techno-nationalism. You know, when I go to place to Europe or other parts of the world, often I'll hear policymakers talk about digital sovereignty, the importance for a domestic technology industry within that country or that region. And I think that's good. You should have a strong domestic technology industry within your country or region. But that doesn't mean that we can't collaborate on things like open source software. And I think that it's important for us all to remember, as we see friction in trade, that we don't need to have that same friction in open source. And so what the Linux Foundation is doing is creating regional entities for engagement around the world, where companies can collaborate locally in Europe, amongst European organizations only, but they also have reciprocal membership in our global organization in order to take that work as it's being developed around the world. What we're trying to do here is say that you can do both. You can disagree on some things and you can work together on others at the same time. And you'll see us setting up these structures as we move on. The other thing that we're doing in 2023 is that we're going to continue to invest more here in Japan. Japan has perhaps one of the greatest potentials to be a leader in open source and a leader in open source security. And here's why. The number one country in terms of investment in cybersecurity, in terms of private equity investment in cybersecurity startups in the world is Israel. Israel is a small country but they have a hugely disproportionate impact on cybersecurity tooling, investment, and services. But Japan shares some very similar aspects to Israel. Japan has one of the most 
educated populations in the world. When you graduate from high school and college in Japan, you have a very, very high education, and the vast majority of citizens here do it. This creates an incredible opportunity to use those skills, knowledge, and education to take on cybersecurity challenges, to work on things like software bill of materials, to work on things like advanced tooling and testing. And we see that vision, and we're going to continue to invest here in Japan to help technology industry and the government here create a stronger Japan. And so with that, I know I've gone over a few minutes. I want to thank you all for your time. It's been an incredibly good 2022. I'm so glad to finally be able to come back uh, to Japan, and I look forward to working with all of you in 2023. Domo, arigatou gozaimashita.